let's first start by saying thank you all for being here. Um, uh, I, I, we started thinking about it because Neil, you came in with like some sort of question on where we're reopening in the UK on the 4th of July and um, can we share some experiences? I believe that Tom already sent you over uh, some excellent Apolida notes and, and that there is, there is quite a lot online. But, um, well, we have already some experiences in the Netherlands uh, with being open in different ways and, and using protocols. Uh, I know, Marie, uh, we have already, well, not for Alex, but we already discussed online quite a few bits. So um, let's just start. Let's, let's, Alex sent in some, some sort of questions uh, that he's thinking about. And Neil, you did. Uh, Alex was a little bit more elaborate, so maybe I can just give, and Alex is such an excellent speaker, I can give over the, the voice to you, Alex, and, and you ask the people in the room uh, whatever uh, has your interest or your staff's interest. Uh, yes, okay, though elaborate's not always necessarily the most helpful thing, is it? Sometimes a bit of <laughs> strategic simplification, so Neil, stop me. Um, I think I think probably it would just be really helpful to hear about how I'm very interested in, in in the simplest terms in demand in what how much the public has is I are or is using your your libraries as you've opened opened them and which of your communities you're seeing in your buildings um, uh, the most vulnerable the the most engaged the the younger the older it, it would be really helpful I think. We, 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 I'd of course love to hear about how you're serving those communities as well. But I think the first, the first question that we all had at this end was trying to know who we were trying to support and who's most likely to come into the building. So it would be really interesting to hear from you guys about who you're seeing in your buildings um, uh, uh, in terms of demand <laughs> for the services. Um, and then obviously it would be really helpful to hear about the supply, how you're, how you're creating safe spaces for your staff and for your users um, uh, and, and there, I've got lots of specific questions which I, w I won't yeah, dive into yet yeah, but, yeah. Um, but for, for fear of it okay. being overwhelming but um, but it would be wonderful just to hear your the story of your reopening and how it's gone and is going and what your what key lessons you've learned along the way about about that does that make sense Eric yes that makes perfect sense Neil yeah yeah that sound okay Okay. So Marie, maybe you can I can start. go. I can go first. Yeah. Um, so there are some general overview of what we needed to be ready with in order to open. And and for us, it, in the beginning, it was a distance of two meters. Now it's down to one. Uh, and it was so to put up all these signage saying keep your distance. We had to put up sanitizers for uh, both staff and users everywhere. So that's everywhere we put up small signage uh, like a big red dot on all the contact points that we have so that will be our delivery um, machines our um, lending machines where you have a, a, a joint touch screen that you, you use and sanitize hand sanitizer put up every place like that um, so and we, um, because in the beginning when we uh, were allowed to open up, we were only allowed to open up for borrowings and delivery. Um, but people were allowed to get into the library and pick their books on, from the shelves themselves. They were just not allowed to, um, to sit down. Okay. So we removed um, all the furniture, all the, all the seatings from everywhere, from all the 19 libraries. Um, and and then use some of the em empty space to make sure that people could keep a distance and also to put up new exhibitions of uh, books basically so you could say we it became a very old school library in that sense um and uh but for especially the small library is a good thing because it, it made people um be able to to have keep that those two meters distance so what we found was in those first three days was we, we knew that at that point when we did, when we closed down we had 2.8 kilometers of books out that was somebody had borrowed so we knew that um, that if everybody came back on Monday and handed all this stuff in everything would break down so we of course had stopped uh, the um, the fines on books and we had uh, prolonged the delivery period so so that they could deliver over four the four next 
following weeks without having any fines on their on their books. And we did a quite a lot of communication to people about not coming in on Monday. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Hello. Um, not coming in on Monday. Uh, and so what we found, were, and also we had closed down for reservations, uh, book reservations, and we opened that up on the same Monday. And in, within the first 24 hours, we got 12,000 new reservations, which is more than Whoa. six, six the, time, the, the number of, of, um, of what we usually have. So there was a high uh, demand for all the um, transactional services that we had. I think we had on, on Monday before noon, we had 10% of the books that were out were coming in, but we did not experience a high, it didn't feel like a rush of people because they came in, they did their stuff and then they left again. So it was quite um, peaceful. Uh, and it was all you asked about what were the, who were the people who came in and it was quite um, a lot of the different types of people but no, we didn't see any kids no. so okay. no, we haven't seen any kids or parents with kids be, until now because they didn't want to bring their kids in well a, a few but they didn't want to bring their kids in because the kids were used are used to staying in the library playing in the library and reading in the library and bringing them in just to pick up books and leave again was actually more of a hassle than leaving them at home and just picking up books. So, but from this Monday, we are now allowed to open up uh, to have people stay in the library. So now we're putting all the furniture back. We had three days without furniture and now we're putting it all back. Things are <laughs> moving really quickly here in Denmark. Um, so now we see uh, families beginning to come back. We see students coming back because they weren't allowed to study in, in the libraries before. And now there is a regulation. So we put up a signage on each table where to place the chair so to, to uphold the regulations of distance. Um, and we, of course, still have hand sanitizers everywhere. And, um, and also the users need to be able to sanitize the space that they're sitting at if they wish to so that has to be available as well mm -hmm. and there's still these we, we we uphold the the two meter distance even though it's down to one now in denmark because we we know people can't figure it out anyway so so it's better to to have a little more than than less but so we're, we're placing more back except from the chairs and and, and sofas that are made out of um, uh, cloth because we can't um, clean that so um, so those can't get back yet, but the rest uh, we're putting up. We don't. We haven't brought back any toys because we don't. We can't no. uphold the regulations about cleaning toys. That has to be. Uh, I think they have to be uh, cleansed thrice a day. If we did that, yeah, it's, 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 we can't do that. Um, so, but at least now they can come in and they can they can use the premises in, in sort of some of the ways that they do. We have not started yet on uh, programs. Uh, it has been. We are allowed now to do for seeded programs. We're actually allowed to have um, programs with 500 people as long as we can keep the distance between them at one meter. Uh, we don't want to do that. At the same time, we're, we're encouraged not to make activities that, um, that invites people to gather. And we still have this 10 person, you can only gather 10 people. Um, so it's a very contradictory the way it, it's done. So what we're do, dealing with right now is that um, we, we're probably going to start uh, homework cafes, stuff like that, where we can control that people are not too many people and they're still on it with a distance. I don't think we'll open up for um, activities programs in our auditoriums, even though we're allowed to. Uh, okay. But uh, but it's it's not a... So I wouldn't know if people would come for that. I'm pretty sure they'll come for the smaller things. Mm. People are very hungry for cultural activities and they're very eager. And also all our partners that are doing programs in our libraries are extremely eager to come in and start it up again. So we're the ones keeping them back a little at the moment. Um, and and Marie, before we go to Anna, Laura and Tom, uh, Something on computer use? Do you allow them to use computers? No, bathroom? no computers. No computers. No printers. No cop photocopying. Um, that's specific, specifically mentioned that we're not allowed. Bathrooms, yes, but we do. Uh, we have two extra rounds of cleaning every day. Um, 
we, we, we have opened uh, uh, the internet spaces and uh, computers and everything. Um, well, machines, not toys. And um, we have extra cleaning um, two times a day. And then uh, we provide customers with uh, de disinfectant and they can get it at the uh, at the information counter if they want to do it by themselves before they use uh, the devices yeah we're waiting for uh, that to be allowed to do that if, if 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 you if you put it on the place they take it away because yeah. it's uh, take it home <laughs> yes yeah. well may, maybe it's improving now because uh, now in the shops you can get it as yeah well but uh, earlier when it was difficult to to buy the things uh, you couldn't yeah. uh, place them we had to actually invent and and produce ourselves specific um, um, holders for hand sanitizers that could both be standing alone and also be glued onto our self-service um, devices so that people don't steal it also there is an issue we know there is an issue with um, homeless people who are drinking and we experienced it before that they not only steal it they drink it and uh, actually we had some very bad um, experiences with that so we want to make sure that yeah. you can't take it and drink it but you shouldn't use vodka to uh, sanitize no but you know what the worst thing is that here in Denmark they started to make hand sanitizer out of tequila so all of the breweries <laughs> yes so it totally smells like a mix between tequila and vodka yeah. i'm not kidding it's horrible yeah. we all smell like drunks yeah well uh, anna laura sorry tom anna laura uh, um no you, you can start to but i was thinking like anna laura started out with um only open for 20 minutes and now i think opening for people is more open like like marie also said i don't know tom in the netherlands is is, is it open completely now in cologne or not well, uh, here in Germany, we don't have a rule that you have to limit the time they are in the building. But uh, on the other hand, uh, you ha we have the rule that you have to register uh, each person who is entering and leaving the building. So in the first run, uh, we, we said we have to limit, it, uh, to limit time because if you have to give to the health uh, uh, department uh, addresses who has been in the building at what time, uh, there should be a certain amount of time you can say people were in the building. So you but register people who are in the building? We have to. Really? It, yeah. It's okay. you huge work for for a stupid uh, thing because uh, you don't we have six floors so you don't know if you go first floor and i go fourth floor we but never how? met but uh, when i have to uh, when you get corona i have to tell them uh, who was in the building at the same time like marie yeah, no, I get that. I'm just thinking that, that that totally goes against everything that we in libraries about not registering and not not giving out data on what Privacy, people have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so so we 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 have security staff at the entrance, and they just registered the number of the library card and uh, people who don't have a card. Well, they have to register uh, by name, uh, but. Otherwise, we have only the number of the library card and the time when they are coming and uh, we have to uh, uh, destroy this after four weeks. But, well, we yeah. have to. Yeah. It's, and it's difficult to explain people, uh, but they do. Yeah. But they don't need masks if they are coming, so it's kind of stupid. But uh, well, we, 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 um, now uh, everybody can come as long as he or she wants. We um, went from 20 to 40 hours uh, uh, minutes and then to two hours. And now we have unlimited access. And uh, we learned that you have to make the building nice. When we, when we uh, started, it was uh, the supermarket model where they only could uh, go to uh, the shelves. And then we had all the furniture with the red and white bandanas and it looked uh, like on the construction site. And uh, when we started to uh, open some uh, seating space, we just left it and opened some seats and you 
people felt uncomfortable. So now we brought away the furniture and made the spy a space looking normal and not uh, that there are uh, two tables on each other. And so, so I, I think and now the numbers are increasing because it looks like normal. A library, yes. It's, it's and you, you said, I remember you wrote somewhere that uh, after two weeks, 40% of your u regular users had come back. Was that right? Yeah, now we are at 50%. Right. But how many weeks? How many weeks? Three, four weeks? It's the fifth week now. Fifth week. Okay, okay. Yeah, but they are not allowed to gather in groups. And we have a lot of pupils who are coming and meeting and doing homework together. And so, and they don't come because school, most of the schools uh, still are closed. And so they don't have to do homework or they cannot meet with their friend. And that's especially difficult in spaces like Kalk, where it's a third space yeah. where the whole idea is to meet and uh, yeah. to be there um, but now we are allowed to do programs as well and we had the first workshops and it's like Marie said people uh, want to uh, go out they want to uh, be in small groups and uh, well some of them they're really tired of watching events online or in the screen so you really have to start with small events and Tom you have a beautiful new library it's so weird that the moment you open it it has to close down again Eric Alex is just asking to jump in before you move on oh, sorry. oh thank you I just wanted to hear a little bit more about how you're running those workshops um, what group sizes are you operating social distancing could you just talk a little about how those workshops and groups are working in your various oh events? That's Germany. You have rules for everything. So um, it said that uh, per person you have five square meters. Um, so if you have a space with uh, 50 square meters, you, uh, 10 uh, people are allo uh, allowed and uh, then you have to distance them. So each person working uh, has to have one meter 50 around. So yeah. this we have four, four square meters per person. Yeah. So there will probably become a rule in, in UK as well, I think. Or otherwise you can, could take the four or five square meters. But you, you have to have the distance as well, Marie. Yeah, but if you stand in the middle of, a, if, of four square meters, you have a distance. We only have one meter um, yeah. rule to each side. So, and yeah. And are your staff, um, are you insisting that, are there any regulations around um, masks or covering or gloves or for, for staff? Now, in Denmark, we don't use masks. Masks are, in, our country, in contrary to many other countries, masks in Denmark signals danger and uh, you're dangerous to each other. So no, people, um, it's actually not something that you're required to. <laughs> we, um, we, we did this with our 3D printer in uh, home production, so um, this is for staff and um, they feel comfortable with it because they can talk normally and uh, they can see each other. We put up um, plexiglass um, at the um, information points well so. this we did as well but if you have a workshop and you or you're walking around in the building but you keep a distance anyway yeah but uh, um, people feel more comfortable yeah. Yeah. and and our uh, our city administration advises people to wear masks if they enter a public uh, building so if my staff wouldn't wear this yeah. Um, well. Yeah, that's not the, we don't have that uh, in Denmark, but we do have the plexiglass with our information points and at, in their office areas, there is also the distance, the physical distance that we need to um, uphold. Yes. Plus we've divided all staff, all teams into two groups. So they meet every second day into the library. And how so they is come that in. the new term? Is that, do we wear masks in Utrecht or not? 
we are not wearing masks, but we give um, uh, our staff who are, well, feeling the need to have a mask the opportunity to wear it. So okay. it's up to them. Um, yeah. We have the same kind of protection, which is based on distance, one and a half meters. And that is how we started because we didn't have the plexiglass stuff uh, in place. And now it's in place. Some staff are complaining that they can't hear the patrons yeah. anymore. So um, every advantage has a disadvantage, you could say. Uh, but um, the, the basis for being protected is, is distance in, uh, in, in the Netherlands. Um, and Alor, your, your masks, you're saying they're those like visors, aren't they? The clear ones that you're printing this, in the, yeah. Yeah, you only, you only print this and this is uh, yeah. the um, copy uh, for foil or slide or whatever. Yeah. You, so, and here, uh, my staff, they, they were, <coughs> they have the plexiglass. <laughs> they have the mask and they have the distance. Right. And yeah. some of them still are afraid. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, if I if I'm allowed to comment on what Marie earlier said uh, to uh, to see what is different in uh, in the Netherlands uh, or the same, then um, well, we did the same with furniture and signing etc. in the libraries. Uh, we see that some of our staff is demanding a lot of arrows and signals etc and we don't do all of them because if you create them other staff members who are very strict will require that you follow up on these uh, these arrows and, and signals and um, not all staff is very um, assertive in in addressing uh, visitors by saying, oh, you can't do go that way, you have to go that way. So the balance between what you put mm. into your building and what you maintain is, is something to, uh, to take care of. Um, I discussed yesterday with Marie that there is not a huge portion, but there are uh, among our staff members who have been, well, they live alone, they have been working from home for eight, ten weeks, and now they are uh, in an area where there is visitors. So that's a big change for them. And these visitors, they are around them. They might be behind them. So some people are really frightened. Mm. Uh, it's because they are not used to what they consider as a danger. You know, they, they go in traffic every day and they get, can get run over, but that's a danger we are used to. And this is different. So we offer them, um, um, counseling uh, by our health uh, company we, we are connected to, uh, to make sure that they feel at home. And I know Marie has, like we do, taken measures that some of these staff are not in, in the service in contact with, uh, with the patrons. We also see that we have less visitors like in, uh, in, in Cologne. Um, we um, had the rule that we had to keep the books for 72 hours in quarantine. That's now back to 36 hours. I know there are countries where there is no period. You don't at have all. any. It's, no quarantine. Um, it's, we, we either. It's, it's not helpful if, um, if all the experts uh, uh, contradict one another, I would say. I agree. Um, we had, like Eric mentioned, our central library closed in mid February. And that wasn't open before the crisis broke out. So we have two systems for people to get into the library. One is in the neighborhood libraries where you can come. And if there's a queue, which is often not the case, then you queue in one and a half meter distance. At the entrance, you clean your hands and you get a token. And by the number of tokens, we control the number of people being together in the library. Uh, so when you go out, you have to give the token back. It's cleaned for another use. Uh, we don't register, uh, fortunately, in the way Anna Laura has to do uh, which people are in. Um, for the central library, as it was new and we expected big interest in visiting that building, we started by making online reservations in time slots of a half an hour. And we for used... For visiting? Sorry? For visiting? 
for visiting, yes, for, for borrowing and visiting. And we used uh, the, 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 the system we have, the software we have, where people can make reservations for visiting uh, program activities. Um, the service for elderly people, as they are vulnerable and often also not very eager to walk the streets, we had a service that we would call senior uh, patrons, starting with 80 up and then going down to 70 up. And we still do that. We call them and we ask them if they are interested in having books. And then we get on the bicycle and bring a paper bag at their door. So that's, that's a service for that group. We see parents with kids in the library. Um, and as, as Marie said, they want to sit there and they want to read or play. Well, they can't play because nothing is there. Um, and if it gets too crowded, we have to tell them, please take the books and read them at home and don't stay too long. Um, the, the, basically, we depend on uh, the own responsibility of the, the visitors. So we, like you do, make them clean the spots where they will be working or uh, the materials they, uh, they use. And we have a rule that we can have kids one in five square meters and uh, adults one in 10 square meters. So that's oh. a different rule, um, which is, uh, uh, well, uh, helpful because the kids area can be crowded, but the, the adults, the parents have to stay at a safe distance of one and a half meters. And unlike Marie, we thought that programs or workshops where people make a reservation online, that is what is required by the Dutch protocol. And we have to ask them when people get in, if they are feeling healthy and don't have fever, etc. So that's another <laughs> question asked at the front door. But by making reservations, uh, we can control how many people are in the building. And we thought that was easier to do than the, let's say, the open use of reading spots or study or working spaces. So we will start next week with study and working spaces, um, meaning that people can uh, work and study, but with their own device. We don't do computer facilities, copying printer facilities yet, oh. because there's a lot of cleaning involved. And even there was a recommendation that you should take the keyboards of the computers after use and put them in quarantine, which is not very practical, I would say. So that is, that is more or less um, in addition to what was said earlier. Very good, Tom. And did, did any of you three consult staff or patrons, users, uh, on what they would need to feel safe in the building? Did you, did you consult now? Yes, enormously. I mean, I, I don't think I've done anything than consulting it, it's it's actually it's a requirement so it's not a and it's a good thing so yes i've had we've had uh, an enormous amount of consultations we have a, a system in, and I, I think you have some of the similar we have a system with um uh, what we call um work um, work environment representatives that are mm -hmm. staff and yeah. a regular basis on every month uh, leadership meets with staff and they're appointed and often they're also the union representatives. So that, that's sort of a, a normal system. But during this period, we've had uh, once a week, these meetings, and I have one tomorrow again, because every time guidelines changes, we do these meetings. So we have had an enormous amount of these consultations. We've also used them in uh, measuring the areas of the libraries when we were putting up the, all the signage and stuff so that they were representing staff and were, were part of this. Um, and also we've of course been uh, going through every single team with their team leaders and with the staff in every team. I have uh, what, four, nine, ten teams or something. And having one-to-one -one discussions with them online before about what what are their worries, what are the guidelines, and but it's been a very strict decision from above that we are not we are not um, strengthening guidelines. We have the national guidelines, and these we have to follow. But it's a it's a mm. municipal decision not to um, 
upgrade them. So we follow those and then we try to adjust within those. And then as Ton said, try to, to take care of the people who feel extra worried and on the contrary, try to tone down the people who are not worried at all. Uh, but yes, there's been an enormous amount. Of, uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of talking. <laughs> a lot of talking and a lot of pathos and a lot of um, yeah. discussing emotions. And, and, you, and in addition to, uh, to all the, 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 the talks, we have uh, a, a weekly newsletter to all uh, our staff um, with additions when our prime minister announces something new or when there are new rules. Uh, also, I have every week now conversations with the employees committee, who of course is looking into this as well very much. So. There is a lot of communication with staff. I must confess there is less with patrons. We do ask patrons uh, mm. who are in the building uh, how they experience it, but we didn't consult them up front. And I think the reason was that we started in a model like in supermarkets, IKEA yes. and other places where they already went to mm. garden centers. So they they already were familiar with this type of visits that were possible in the in the library is that new that weekly newsletter tom is that something that you didn't do before we communicated but now it's more intensively yeah. yes yeah. i do the weekly newsletters can i just add before you ask alex to the the consultation of users we don't consult users in this this is not something that that users have any influence on at all. These are uh, national guidelines that are put out. And we, of course, we get <clears throat> tons of complaints. We get also people who want something different or we get a lot of questions. And yeah. we, so we deal with them one by one, but because these are national guidelines, we can't decide not to do what's in these guidelines. Yes, we, uh, we, same have, to, here. Yeah. we have to double customer services telephone people. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's a lot of questions asked on telephone and you have to have enough capacity to, uh, to manage that. And so, Marie, you, you didn't find that you had a sort of public service role in informing people about the guidelines or everybody knows by this point? Well, they're uh, all, we, we, of course, we inform of all of our guidelines and also of all the different, I mean, we have tons of Q&As on our websites, out yeah. on our Facebooks. We have tons of communication about what can you do now. And, and things have changed so rapidly here that people are a little confused. So yeah. we're struggling with that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so, do, so we do do a lot of, but not a consultation, not in, a consultation mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. asking them what they think or how they right, would yeah. feel. No, and, and, and people are expecting uh, uh, it being like that because they are used to it uh, by supermarkets and other um, places mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you don't have to communicate especially there are okay. the rules they already know okay yeah yeah no. they come with a mask even they don't have to have a mask in the library mm -hmm. so because in the supermarket they have to have and in the uh, public transport as well but not in the library but in a museum they have to have so they don't know and they just wear it and um so I think, but uh, uh, with, uh, with the staff, uh, we as a leader uh, group, uh, we made the suggestions. When we got the new uh, regulations, uh, then we made the suggestions what we could do as a next step. And then we, each uh, 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 of my colleagues uh, who has an own uh, branch or an own department, they were moderating uh, into their teams. But uh, we, we did not discuss with each team what could we do and then we find a final decision. But we made the rules and said this is the way we should do. And Yeah, no, it's the same when I said we had, that's what we've been doing. But it's, it's, we've been taking very good care of listening to their worries and then discussing the worries, but not changing the rules. No, not changing the so, rules. So it's a very, uh, very big difference. Yeah. I also have to, something, something I forgot, uh, we are not allowed yet to have our open libraries, our unstaffed libraries. As you guys mm. know, we have these unstaffed libraries yeah. um, in, in tons of all of our libraries and also at, at night and dot one. Uh, but uh, we can only do staffed library time at the moment. So yeah. we're not allowed to do 
which is which is good. I think that's. And, and Maria Eston said because some of the staff members may not be as assertive as to to tell people you can walk that way, you have to walk this way. Did, did you did you have to hire extra security, or did you have to? No, have we've had to change some of. No, we haven't. We and we don't have security, so no. so we didn't hire extra. It's security. a civilized country, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but what we have done is that um, so because we have these teams divided in half, so some people come in on Monday, the other people come in Tuesday. What we say is that your office time is on the days that you're at home. So when you're in, you are on the floor, which means that we have more staff on the floor than we ever had before. And they have better time because there are fewer people. So, so in that sense, you can say we have more people uh, helping users uh, regulate themselves, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we started with, uh, especially for the new central library, with uh, some more security at the front, but we did that with the idea, we don't want things to happen, we don't want negative publicity, and we could scale it down within two days, so no problem there. But just to give you an idea, in Doc 1, we usually have at any given time during a day, seven to 800 people at the same time. Right now, we have around 50. Mm, and you know um, how big it is. There is yeah, nobody. No one. <laughs> no. And, and of course, that will change now because now people are beginning to come in and sit down and study and play and all that. But for the first days when we opened, it was, they just came in, did their thing, went out again. Yeah. So it was a very smooth flow. Um, yeah. And is that a number you've set? Have you said no more than 50 in the building? No, no, or no. Is that we measured, no, we measured the, all the libraries saying how many people in total are allowed to be in here, uh, depending on square meters. So no, it's a way, we actually, we um, striped zones in every library saying in this zone, so, so that you could have an overview. So in this zone, you can be 30 people. In this zone, there's space for 50 people because staff were worried that they weren't capable of overlooking it or having an idea of how many people are in and how many people but are allowed. I mean, we have counters at the entrance, but still we also had to regulate zones, but that has not been a problem. Um, um, my team had the same fears, but we learned that they are coming uh, so less people that it's yeah. no problem to oversee uh, how many there are. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Can you talk about cash? Uh, are you, um, have you made your buildings cashless in any way? We, uh, I'm, I can't quite see how we'll achieve that. We take about half a million pounds worth of notes and coins every oh. year. Is that something you guys are looking at? Cashless. We, we've been pretty cashless for a long time, but we oh. are actually obligated to receive cash from people who ask to pay mm. with cash and don't have any other options. We just had a, a ruling on that. Mm. Um, but, but not many people use cash at all in Denmark, so it's not a, it's not a big thing. No, not, not here. Can I ask a question about um, 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 publicity, uh, about uh, efficacy? Because um, we felt very much the need when the libraries were closed to well, to have digital services, et cetera, and show the value of the library to the community. And we got good attention by local press, for example. Um, when we reopened libraries, we did not all at once, but we did them in, in groups. And um, that was very well received and gave us an opportunity on television and in the newspaper, et cetera, to, to talk about the value of the library. And we think we need that because uh, we already see the signs that in the aftermath of this uh, corona crisis there will be a lot of economical problems and budget cuts so um, we we already speed up to um, well to to be ready for that how how was that in your you you are wonderful communicators and, and lobbyists i know but was that an issue in, in your community as well? Yeah, we, we've been quite um, heavily engaging in, in communication everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been quite, also the, there was a, a general discussion in Denmark that all the public servants were sent home with unpay and were they just on a holiday, paid holiday and all the, the private companies, they were starving and having a hard time. So it became very important to show the value of 
our public institutions also in closed down periods. So mm. we did what you did mm. uh, and did an enormous amount of digital services and reinvented digital formats that we never even thought about before. Yeah. Uh, some of which that we're going to continue. Um, also trying to tap into the conversations about vulnerable elderly people, homeless people, um, psychologically vulnerable young people, uh, try, doing quite a few design sprints in the close down period where we're mm. reaching out and designing new kinds of um, uh, yeah. services. Yes, and then at the same time, uh, we uh, advocated quite, and you know, Steen from um, yeah. Liga, yeah. Uh, Ton, uh, and, and uh, the Library Association advocated quite uh, well on a national level together with the, um, we have a, a library directors uh, union where I'm at the, in the board and we also pushed quite hard on a national level on having a, at least having a conversation about the value of libraries and reopening libraries. So in Denmark, libraries were actually the first cultural institution to open at all. Mm -hmm. and I think so that was... We yeah, so I think that was part of that, um, also an, on an international level, a push for knowledge. And, um, in, 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 in Germany, there was no rule at all to close the libraries. This was uh, only because uh, municipalities uh, did, but uh, in the protocol or in, in the law, uh, there was always an option to open a library. So I, I think that's great success. Uh, for the role of libraries, um, um, we, we 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 got uh, three thousand new customers during the lockdown. So uh, that's a good PR tool uh, now uh, to fund digital services. And so I I think there was something good for us as well. Anna, you mentioned that number before. Can you remind me what what is that as percentage of current customers and how many new would you normally get? So you've got 3,000 new, how many would you have? Well, you this, it was a really big increase compared to normal, right? Well, we, we, we uh, usually we get uh, 3,000 physical at the same time, but this were new customers mm -hmm. uh, who only used the online uh, right. services and now uh, they are coming and getting a library card. We're just mm -hmm. uh, doing statistics to find out how many of them are staying now. And, right. But yeah. I, I think even if you would have had 3,000 uh, new visitors uh, when the space is open, it's great success to say, uh, well, people are registering uh, mm -hmm. while you are closed. Yeah. But also remember our discussion on, on WhatsApp about what is yeah. what are the signals that we're sending. And so what we did was also to try and and, ra and, and be insistent on the conversation that even though we're opening and we're happy we're opening for borrowing and lending um, and delivery, this is not the library opening. No. This is uh, the old school um, once was library and yeah, we're happy yeah. to open for that. So we actually did quite a lot of communication around that. And mm. unfortunately, uh, there was a big, um, we, it bounced well with politicians. They were also very eager to help share that communication that, that libraries are much more than this, but we are happy to be in the first row of, of organizations opening up. That proves how libraries are important, but libraries are much more. So it, it helped, we helped kick that conversation bigger. So did you kind of say, we're open, we're happy to be open, but we want to be open more or as we used to be, because it's quite a nuanced well, message to yeah. deliver, isn't it? I, I think so, because, you know, we, well, we, we experienced this in a very uh, profound way as we created this new central library with all the facilities. And the only thing you can do is circulate books. So uh, so, yeah. taking out all these meeting spaces, these chairs like Maria has done, yeah. that really hurts. It's, it's awful. And, and um, of course, we have to tell, uh, you know, when, when you have all the functions of the library as a community resource and, and as a movement and as a working space, um, all that is not there when you only circulate books. So it's not the complete library. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of curious about what, what was the language you used? Because it's a kind of happy but not happy. 
Well, we 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 we, we are always forward. said. We always mm -hmm. said we're very happy because mm -hmm. we are the first ones to open, and mm -hmm. it it shows that libraries are extremely important to our communities. Just be aware that this is the old school library. This is the restricted library. Right. You cannot expect okay. the library to be what you expect, what you used to to when yeah. you come in. So mm -hmm. don't be disappointed. Just okay. be happy with right. us. About so yeah. you could say in an, in an old-fashioned term that the whole idea of the library as a third place completely vanished uh, yeah. right now. So all the stuff that consists of the third space is not there. Yeah. But it's beginning to come back. But oh. but it became very clear to everyone that when you take that away from the libraries, it becomes a very um, supermarket-like place uh, with tons of transactions, but not much feeling or value in yeah. terms of emotions. It's really a depressing feeling when you yeah. walk uh, through this kind of library. I felt really depressed. Mm. Yeah. Um, we avoided what you did, Hannah. I saw your pictures. It's yeah, not we did too. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> but we avoided these red and white things and these these piles of chairs. We we you tried to make it look like a, a more sophisticated <clears throat> environment. But we still communicated. Yeah. We look so forward to having all the other facilities back uh, running again. It was very helpful, Hannah. Actually, I used yeah. your pictures to show to my uh, the leader of the the physical premises and saying, "Look, this is <coughs> this is what we're dealing with. If if we need, if we're not doing this in time, because I mean, you were you had to move quite quickly. So some and some sometimes you have to do this. So he was very insistent on getting all the furniture out instead of doing that. Yeah, I I would highly recommend you this. But this was I, I left it over to we the staff. Yeah. I, I left it over to the staff, uh, and they did it this way. And um, also, so, having said that, we only had three days before the guidelines were changed. Yeah. So it was, so then then we regret it not doing what you did <laughs> because that would have been a lot well, easier. Well, to... now now it's now it's easier because we just put the bandana away and put the tables and the, but uh, the, yesterday I went through the house and put away the last red and white uh, bandanas because uh, well staff gets used to it and they don't see how negative it, were, it looks <laughs> like. But thank you for providing us with a learning opportunity. It was very, we were very happy to have your experiences. I, I, I think they actually helped a lot. The whole conversation has been very, very useful. And this one as well. I, I just want to know, because we're almost running into an hour, um, Neil, uh, did, we, did we not cover any of the questions that you had? Would you have some special focus? Alex, maybe you have some, because you're all, you have like a month to prepare. You're going, you're opening up on the 4th of July. You have a little over a month, so. Oh, plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. So is there anything else that you want to know? Is there anything you want to take with you from this conversation? I mean, it's been really, really useful. Uh, really, I really appreciate you giving your time and sharing your experiences. Uh, there's currently a, a, a toolkit being prepared uh, with government on uh, guidance for libraries uh, reopening. Certainly, we are not looking at opening for browsing in the first instance. We'll only be looking at opening maybe seven or eight of our libraries out of 22 in Manchester and probably not opening the central library uh, right away. Uh, but that's basically seeing how the rebirth, the, the recovery of the city centre, not just the library service. So shops will be opening from next week. So really want to try and get an understanding of how the city will start to work uh, and then what the library's contribution to that is moving forward. Excellent. Yeah. That's Neil. That's like, really helpful to hear. I'd love to hear some more about your staff working patterns, if that's possible, and how you've organised those in the different um, countries. This is, I mean, honestly, and by the way, this is absolute gold. I can't tell you how how useful this is going to be. And the guys, yeah, the twenty five libraries across the network are going to devour this. So thank you. Um, but yeah, your staff working patterns. Well, rule in the Netherlands is if you can work from home, you should work from home. So that is the rule we apply for our staff. That means that we limit, uh, well, we say if you have to be for your work in, in the libraries, you're welcome, but uh, work from home. And that's also because we created a very dense office 
to have the maximum of public space in the building. Uh, and now we have, as a result of that, a problem to change that to the one and a half meter society. So um, we are adjusting that, but we haven't done that yet. Um, of course, we equipped staff with when it was needed with uh, well the technology the laptops etc to do work from home and that works rather well we have these online meetings um, and um, we saw that uh, many of our staff were very eager to come to the libraries and to be in contact with the patrons again so um, i wouldn't say that we had to uh, hush them down, but but that really was a very positive signal, I, I would say. Um, so that's that's uh, um, uh, what we experience on that area. For, for for us, it was difficult because I have a lot of staff members who, who are in direct customer contact. Uh, they don't have so much work to, uh, to do in home office and uh, like. Uh, uh, it's also uh, librarians, but also bookshelfers and uh, uh, people who are wrapping the books. We are doing this in our library. I, I cannot send them in home office. So, for example, uh, the, the bookshelfers, we let them clean books now, uh, like children books. We uh, never have the time to get them cleaned or uh, it's not because of Corona, but just get them uh, doing uh, something or uh, uh, I let them translate. Uh, we have a lot of Turkish people here. I let them translate our website uh, so they could do relevant work or I let them uh, uh, sew masks. Uh, so we had to be very creative to invent uh, jobs for people yeah. who, who don't have office work. Yeah. And this, this really was a problem for me when they were in home office. Uh, and, and now yeah. mo most of the staff, they're back here because they're only in customer service. And we put some areas, uh, uh, customer areas, uh, we separated for staff, so um, we have the one and a half meter rule and got some extra uh, working space for for our staff members. So that's we, and and there is some problem because the higher paid staff they have the chance to be in home office. The lower paid staff they have to be there so you have to be careful that you don't have a, a two class society uh, between uh, the people but on the other side you don't want to be them in the public transport if they could work at home on the other hand side the low paid bookshelfer has to come and so to find a balance between that uh, well this needs a lot of leadership yeah I, I would add that we did a lot of online training for staff at home and uh, well we provide them with possibilities of that and I well, wouldn't say that they did all week online training but it was helpful to have a, a serious pastime if they couldn't work. But some of them really are not uh, used to do uh, this kind of training. Some of them they didn't have a, a, a Wi-Fi in their homes and yeah. It was really well, well, Marie, Marie. Yeah. So the so we're lucky because in the sense that every staff member has a, 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 a cell phone and a, a, a portable PC, so everybody could bring home devices. And um, so we, what we for the first three weeks we could um, people could easily use that time. We did tons of online competence building. Um, and mm -hmm. there are a lot, we have tons of um, uh, de deliberate goals for each team and in, for the system in total that every yeah. team member could work on. And the, what we've, we found after three weeks, it was that we needed to change um, pace. So not knowing how long we were gonna be at home. So we set out, I, I decided on um, some um, strategic goals that everybody had to work towards that were above all this. So we did, um, uh, a strategic goal called the relational library, um, one called digital services, new digital services, 
we did a social group um, across the, the whole system, a group that were, that were responsible for creating social activities for uh, staff across the libraries. Uh, and we moved into our two topics for the next two years, democracy and, um, and the SDGs. And on top of that, we also created this, uh, do you remember 23 things yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago? so mm -hmm. we did uh i think it's 10 corona things so <laughs> 10 things that every staff member had to learn uh online it could be but it was all linked okay, to yeah. the library services like you had to do throughout this time so so what we've we in in all his we have the the challenge that we're spread out on different um uh, addresses so people have the challenge of meeting and we have it's always a question of how do we glue people better together so we use this opportunity because it's easy to glue people together online uh, across um, physical address to 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 then have people who would normally maybe not go into working groups like that but to have them as part of it as well so we would also have people from technical staff from our driver's office as part of discussions around mm. democracy um, and that actually turned, and, and the relational library, it, well, you know why, you guys yeah. who know me know why I was, I was digging into that, but it was, a, it was again a question about now that we're at home, we cannot have the relationship that we're used to. What are we then? Who are we? And trying to, to, to kick out off some of the, those discussion among staff. So that was extremely interesting. And so what we're now dealing with is that people are coming back half of them are coming back each day. Um, the other people are still at home. How do we then um, maintain some of these groups and some of these discussions? Some, some things just go, they have to go. Other things, they have to stay. And we also invented new kinds of meeting space, meeting times where we met, which we're also gonna keep up with. Um, but, but it's gonna be an issue now, not as you say, Hannah, to, um, not to leave someone out that, uh, yeah that feel like they're sitting at home, other people are back at work and how can we then? So we will maintain these digital meetings for a long time and that's also what the guidelines tells us to do. And we don't, so we try to have also my team leader meetings that will be online, which will also save yeah, us some, some traveling time between uh, libraries, that kind of things. But, but we, we also have as ton, we have these open space um, offices. Nobody has an office themselves. So yeah. I don't have an office um, and that means that we don't have the space for everybody coming in at the same time. That's right. And so, so a lot of, for instance, the people who are doing communication uh, and who are doing administrative work, they come in maybe once a week mm -hmm. to be part of the workspace. But a lot of the time, it, they, they might as well just work from home. And, yeah. and that's also what we're told to do. So, um, yeah, so, so it's, um, it's, Marie, it's a whole that... new thing. Those 10 corona things, is that something you'd, you'd feel comfortable sharing? That sounded lovely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, they're very spe I mean, specific to our library system. And, and to right, tell, but it could be inspirational, right? No, I can, I can yeah. share them. But to tell sure. you the truruth, we mm -hmm. use this also as an as a opportunity to get people together who usually would not engage yeah. in things like this. So it was a very wide range of different types of things that could... Yeah. Nice also like the pub quiz we had yeah it could be some we also did uh we did actually we did what we call walk and talk that was the social yeah. group it, so yeah. just by phone phone becomes a very very good tool when you're staring at mm. a pc all the time so every morning you would be hooked up with someone different yeah. and you could and you would go for a walk and talk to someone on the phone mm. easy yeah we, all, we even did a, a eurovision um Eurovision Song Contest evening with drinks and wigs and 